never know. Zero, two, three, live. Say something and let us know you're on and we'll okay. get started. We'll get started. We have our word in the kitchen. We're starting off at the kitchen with a recipe or two. Let's see. Okay, you can watch on your phone to see if it's ready. This is boring just standing here, but we don't know. Say something. Well, look at that. Me say counter. something or they say something? You, I oh, me say something. I thought you were waiting else. for them to say they could see me or they could hear me. Well, no one's talking on this yet. Maybe nobody's watching. Maybe I'm on the oh, wrong there channel. there you go. Amanda's on. We start now. All right, great. Thank you, Amanda. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Episode 74 of Weight Loss Wednesday. I'm Chef AJ, and this is where I answer your questions about healthy permanent and sustainable weight loss. And the best way to submit a question is through my website, eatonprocess.com. Sorry we're starting a little bit late today, but we had a light bulb burn out, but thanks to Kenny's prowess, he was able to fix it, so we're able to get started. So today I'm going to be making a new recipe from my new upcoming book, The Secrets to Ultimate Weight Loss, which should be out in about two weeks. The book has been finished for some time now, and I appreciate all you guys asking when it's gonna be out. I don't have an exact date, but I can tell you it won't be for at least two weeks because first of all, I'm leaving the country for a while to go teach at Rancho La Puerta. So if you have a chance, come see me in Tecate. We do hands-on classes and lectures. So we can't do it while I'm out of the country. We're having a problem with the cover, the printing, the color is just, it's making me look like I'm sunburned. So that's why it's taking so long. But I promise you, if you sign up to be on my website, which is eatonprocess.com, you will be notified the second the book is available on Amazon. There's no pre-orders, but if you order from my mailing list when we tell you, you'll get a lot of terrific bonuses like the Audible version of the book and a whole new cookbook that I haven't released. So, we're going, you went away, Kenny. Why is that? I'm right here. No, you're there, okay, all right. I just worried, Kenny just like, I thought he was mad. He like just walked away from the set. So the recipe I'm gonna to make today, you will be able to find on page 132. And this recipe is the brainchild of John Pierre, who will be joining me later in the broadcast. He may not have invented the, yes, let's hear it for John Pierre. He may not have invented the recipe, but he certainly popularized it. And JP calls it blended salads. In my book, I call it salad smoothie. So in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, or really any plant-based doctor will tell you how important it is to be eat vegetables, and we'll talk about that a little bit more when I get into the other room and complete the broadcast with John Pierre. But a lot of people struggle with getting in enough vegetables, and especially with getting in the raw salads. Now, raw salads are absolutely delicious, but they are time consuming to eat and you have to make them and chop everything up. So we're gonna show you a really easy way to do it. And this is what I call salad smoothie. This is particularly good for people that don't have time to chew. Maybe they have a job and they, you know, a lot of times they can drink, but they can't eat. These are great if you ever have dental work, but this gets you a lot of nutrition in. Now, it's a salad smoothie because it's made from just vegetables. And a lot of people say, well, can I put fruit in it? Well, you can, but then it's not going to achieve the same goal that we're trying to achieve, which we're going to talk about out there. Obviously, it'd be better to put fruit in a salad smoothie than it would to you know, get a milkshake at McDonald's. But for what we're trying to accomplish in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program with resetting the taste buds and the brain chemistry and cut the cravings, anytime you eat fruit, especially early in the day, even in a healthy manner, you're just setting yourself up for sweet cravings throughout the day if you're a food addict. Fruit is very healthy. A lot of people can eat a lot of fruit without being overweight or triggered to keep eating sweet. But most of the participants in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program can't. We recommend at least one pound of raw vegetables and one pound of cooked vegetables every day. I eat double that amount, so I felt that that was a fair amount to request people to eat a minimum of, usually one pound raw, one pound cooked, but people are having trouble getting it in, so here's a really easy way to do it. And it's very, it's just a lot easier than chewing a salad. So this is my favorite purple Tupperware bowl, which holds, talk louder. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that, guys. I will talk louder. So this is my favorite purple Tupperware bowl, and it, this has two pounds of vegetables in it. Technically, some of these are fruit because bell pepper, cucumber, okra, tomato, eggplant, and zucchini are technically fruits, but we think of them as savory salad vegetables, so even though they're botanically fruits, these are not sweet. So I've got two pounds. I've got eight ounces of each of these four vegetables that I'm going to use, and this is just what I like. You know, when I'm at True North, they have a 24-hour salad bar, so when we make these blended salads or salad smoothies, we just fill the bowl up with whatever's there and blend it. So, got an organic zucchini, because I love zucchini. If you want to be able to wear a bikini, eat zucchini. 
and it, it was about eight ounces. I've got, and they're all, all organic, by the way. Get asked a lot if you have to eat all organic. If you can, it's better if you can afford it, but it's more important to eat vegetables than to make sure it's organic, except for you know certain things. Check the ewg.org, Clean 15, Dirty Dozen. So I've got my Roma tomatoes, and I've got three of those. Now I've got my organic Persian cucumbers. I'm gonna add these later because I like a little texture, even in my blended salads or smoothies to remind me to chew. And I've got eight ounces of organic spinach. So I'm just going to put it all in the blender. Now what's really cool about these blended salads is if you want them hot, if you have a Vitamix or a Blendtec or a high-powered blender, you just run the blender a little bit longer and uh, it makes soup. So that's kind of what's cool about it. So I just put everything in the blender. I'm leaving the zucchini behind, excuse me, the cucumber behind because I like to keep that for a little bit of texture. I always want to make sure I have when you blend it longer, it makes it hot, but does it take any nutrients away? Well, you know, that's a good question. And I know that people are looking for the top of my blender, sorry. You know, they say that when you cook your food, you lose about 30% of the vitamins and minerals. And so I don't know what the temperature is when we're heating it up in the Vitamix for three minutes like that. But even if we lost them, where would we lose them? We'd lose them right into the smoothie, which we'd be drinking, you know? That's why I recommend drinking pot liver. So I'm gonna blend this. <laughs> private group for the mastery program. I had just finished making my famous barefoot salad dressing, which I always make sure I have on hand. It's called barefoot because it knocks your socks off and even kids have written me thanking me for this recipe. And there was some leftover in the blender and he made this for me and it was delicious, but it looked brown. And most people aren't gonna like it if it's brown, so unless you're somebody that doesn't care what it looks like or will put it in, you know, something that you don't see through, I would probably not use a brown salad dressing. So what I like to do is either I'll have it completely plain and maybe throw in some herbs, maybe some mint, basil, parsley, cilantro. I like to put in up to two tablespoons of lime juice. This is organic. It's bottled, but it's organic. And then what I like to do is I like a little texture, kind of like gazpacho soup. Really what we're kind of making is a gazpacho. And I like to keep the cucumbers a little bit chunky. I don't blend them all the way because it's kind of fun. But I put them in afterwards and I'll just blend it very briefly. Oops, forgot one piece. Actually forgot two pieces. There we go. So, now when I'm having this, I'll have the whole thing and maybe that was not even 150 calories because yeah, it, maybe it was 130 calories. So for the same amount of calories in a tablespoon of olive oil, you can have a whole blender of a blended vegetable smoothie. Now what I'll do is I have this jar that will fit this perfectly. It's about 32 ounces. If I'm riding on the train or something, I'll take it with me. Not on a plane, but I can take it on a train and I'll keep it in my cooler and I'll sip it throughout the day. Believe it or not, this also makes a great sauce, especially if you put something in it like onion and garlic that you could put over your rice and veggies. It even makes a great salad dressing over your salad. So imagine a salad dressing made of salad. But the proof of the pudding is in the eating, so I am going to pick a volunteer at random from our studio audience, and that would be you, Kenny. I'm only gonna give you a half a glass in case you don't like it. I don't wanna waste it. And I'm gonna ask Kenny to come join me. And I want you to be honest. I mean, I really do want you to be honest. I mean, okay. if you, because you're a regular person, and you eat pretty healthy, but you do eat a little bit of sugar and high, you know, vegan comfort food. So this is Kenny, he's single. He has very nice hair, by the way. So again, use whatever vegetables you like. You know, if you don't like the ones I use, use something else. You could use carrot or beet. It's good, it tastes, the cucumber is really yeah, good. The cucumber makes it kind of fun, right? Yeah, yeah. it's good, because it, 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 it gives that limey taste yep. too. So again, this is a great way to get your, it's mm. not bad, I'll give you more if you want. You'd probably rather have ice cream though, right? Ice cream for sure. Well, I'll make you ice cream because okay. I've got the machine here. You know, Wednesday is my really busy day because I do my other show earlier and I go to school at night. And so Wednesday, we always have for Charles the stuffed potato meal. He loves the russets, and this is organic corn and beans, salt-free. Then he adds the salsa that I've showed you to make, and it's 
previous episodes in my book on process with that really cool machine. And he adds, actually adds some guacamole. Me, I like the Japanese sweet potatoes and I'll eat them either cold or at room temperature or I'll put them in the air fryer and I'll make what I call sweet potato toast. But Kenny was such a good boy, I'm going to make him some ice cream to have Yay! after he has his smoothie. So if you don't have a champion juicer, you can do this in your Vitamix, you can do this in your food processor. I don't think you can do it in a regular blender. So I just need to walk to the freezer and get, I always have frozen, that's okay. Um, I always make sure I have frozen fruit in the freezer. Costco has a great selection of frozen fruit. They have organic mango, organic cherry, which are my favorite. So we're gonna make my favorite flavor, which is banana cherry mango ice cream. I have this, uh, make sure the bananas are always ripe before you freeze them. But I'll tell you, the Yonana's machine is great. It's the best one for the price. I think it's about $49. But t I teach, and so usually when I'm making banana ice cream, it's for more than a couple of people. And you can't really make it for 20 people in the Yonana's without it burning out. So the Champion Juicer's great. I've had one since about 1987. And all you do is you turn it on, and you put your frozen fruit in. And it has the texture of ice cream, unparalleled, really. So I'm using mango banana and cherry, because that is my favorite. Now this won't taste as creamy if you freeze it, because it's the, the texture that people really like. So it's best eaten right away. You can freeze it and then defrost it, but it's so fun. I've been making this for, like I said, since 1987. I've had this machine people say, well, what did you put in there? What did you put in there? And they don't believe that it doesn't have dairy or sugar. And that's that. So easy. And there we go. So I'm going to give this to Kenny. And we're going to get started with the broadcast. Look at that. Look how creamy that is. Oh, can you see Look that? Look at that. That's yours, Kenny. Look at that. And usually I, I top it with fresh berries as well. So I'm going to go in the other room now. And talk to JP. Mm. Okay, mm. you'd like to be on my left, JP? We're moving. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, you're my left. All right. Here we go. Hello. Say hello. Oh, do you have your books? I want to show yeah, you books. Okay. So, most of you guys know that this is my partner in the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, John Pierre, celebrity fitness and nutritional guru, trains lots of celebrities. But some people don't know that you actually have two books. Actually, these used to be in hardcover. They're soft now, which is nice. So if you're, the first book John Pierre wrote, published by Hay House, is called The Pillars of Health. Four pillars, right? Mm -hmm. And they're all good. And But your last pillar is your favorite, which we'll talk about in a second. And this is a great one, especially for women strong, savvy, safe, which I love. But I want to talk about this book today because you talk about compassion a lot. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, he wanted to call the Ultimate Weight Loss Program the Love and Compassion Program, which I didn't think was a great marketing <laughs> suggestion. But I get where he's coming from. You, you know, you often tell a story when you speak about, you used to work at a health food store. Yeah. And you often tell this, I, I assume, a true story about a lady customer that was sort of negative and unpleasant. Yeah. Well, all the stories are true, of course. Okay. But could you tell that story? Because I, I want to... Sure. So we had a... Uh, I was kind of new to the store working there. And, and the lady came in the doors and all the employees scattered. And I didn't understand why. And they went up to try to help her and she wasn't very friendly. She was actually pretty, you know for lack of a better word, kind of nasty. Mm -hmm. And she was really argumentative. So I continued to try to help her as best I could. And when she was checking out, if we had a, a customer that spent, it was around like over $100, we'd give them a gift. So she didn't, she spent maybe $20, but I knew she was not very happy and I thought I would try to help her and give her a different reference in life. So basically I said, could you hold on a minute, ma'am? And I went under the, the counter and I said, we have a gift for you. And I gave her it to her and she was all shocked and surprised. I said, could you hold on? And I did that probably about four times. And when I piled that on top of her bag, she said to me, she goes, she stopped and she goes, you know, she goes, no one has, has ever done anything like that for me before. She goes, will you be here more often? And because, you know, I was new. Mm -hmm. So the reason I did that is because, you know, she was somebody that had, for, for lack of a better word, you know, a, 
an issue, an issue, it, you know, we call people have physical issues, mm -hmm. they have, she had a mental issue. And when somebody has a mental issue, they have anger or hostility, you don't give them anger and hostility back because that's what causes the disease. Mm -hmm. Just like if somebody had heart disease, you don't give them saturated fat and yeah. tobacco. So I gave her love and compassion because that's the antidote to her, her dis disorder. So yeah, so that's, um, that's well, kind of it. Well. But all the stories in there are actually stories that have happened, of mm -hmm. course, that I've worked with clients or, or people. Wow. Well, how did you develop this air of compassion? Because I find it right now kind of hard sometimes to... What do you mean right now? No, for me in my life right oh. now. I don't mean you, but you, you seem to have this way of being of just... Well, yeah, I mean, it's just one of these things. It's having empathy for other people. It's kind of like there's a whole movement of vegans that are very can be very mean and nasty. Mm -hmm. And when you explain to them, hey, so you were born vegan? And they're like, oh, no. Well, it's like, so when you're talking to people, you yeah. were once there too. Right. So you have right. to have empathy and understand that people weren't born, most of us most weren't born people, vegan. Most people, very few yeah. people, yeah. And so if you would, if, how would you have liked when you became vegan or you weren't quite vegan and somebody was really mean and nasty to you, you wouldn't be really inclined to go vegan. It wouldn't make me want to be vegan because it, I think they were jerks exactly. and I wouldn't want to be like them. Yeah. yeah. So I think, I think it's just like you always say, if you have a question, if the answer is kale. Yeah, yeah. Well, I always say the same thing is if the answer is love and compassion. So I think the two most important things we've learned are kale and kale compassion. Kale and compassion, yeah. Exactly. Maybe yeah. that should be the, the, the name of the program, exactly. There you go. Well, the reason I asked this today is because I'm sort of like in a little bit of a funk, and that's probably why I was being quiet, Kenny, because my feelings have been kind of hurt because if you haven't seen it or listened to it, on Monday I was on the Ritual podcast. Yes, these I heard are, it. These are pre, thank you. These are pre-recorded, and it just happened to come out on Monday, and that day his podcast went to number one in the world of health and wellness Amazing. podcasts. I don't think I had anything to do with Yay. it. <laughs> it just oh. so happens that my episode was the one on the day this happened. And so uh, you can watch it through iTunes or listen through it through iTunes or watch it now on YouTube. It's also being filmed. And a lot of people are saying a lot of nice things that yeah. help them. I'm getting emails and things like that. But people say some really, uh, people I don't know, people who are anonymous, who don't even have their picture or their mm -hmm. full name, are just saying things like uh, that I didn't look good and that, you know, just, just, mm -hmm. just mean things. And what makes a person like mean like that just when they don't even know you you know yeah. well i mean they have their own issues that mm -hmm. they're dealing with and, and people just aren't aren't you know let's face it a good majority of the world isn't very kind and loving no. so i mean you can't take it personally because if say a hundred thousand people watch the show you've got to take an account at least 10 percent are not going to like it because they want to hear the paleo expert or they want mm -hmm. more fitness stuff or they think you should be 30 pounds heavier something yeah. like that so i mean that's just and again when you have the largest show of the day you have the largest amount of people that aren't going to like it because they're going to say something bad. So you should expect more. Yeah, but right. that's with every show. You should yeah. be mad that there wasn't yeah. as many people. that they should, More people should have complained. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Wow, that's a, that's a wonderful way to look at it. But I, I thought, I saw it, yeah. physically saw yeah. it, and I thought you looked excellent. Thank and you. I think also he was asking you questions that... I wasn't prepared for. Yeah, because I, they, I was surprised. I thought... He wanted to talk about my... And I'm not, I'm not upset with Ritual at all. I adored him. I was so honored that he even asked me. I've done lots of interviews and nobody really has ever read my book. You know, like you'll send them their book. And, oh, right. and then when I got there, apparently by the questions he was asking, he actually had read it. Mm -hmm. And I thought I was going to talk about calorie density. I didn't know what he wanted to talk about like past and what, what could I do? I mean, I kind of, part of me wanted to run because I wasn't really that comfortable talking about it, but I did. And you know, maybe some people will be helped and other people will not. Well, I think that's the be, most powerful thing is your story. With it. I think the one that you did for Dr. McDougall yeah. was when you first came out mm -hmm. with all this, mm -hmm. that was the most mm -hmm. moving. Mm -hmm. And then this is probably the yep. second one. Yep. But so he, if you haven't seen it. He has a it, different audience. Whereas McDougall had more of like a, I think primarily plant-based audience. Well, I think he has a much wider kind of but for the, the folks who are watching who haven't seen it, definitely go see yep, it. Go, go see it. Watch and, it, listen uh, to it. it was maybe excellent. leave a nice comment on YouTube yeah. if you're so inclined. My, you know, my mom always used to say, if you had nothing nothing nice to say, say nothing. And there's things I don't care for in life, like movies or performances, but I right. never go like put on social media yeah. that, well, a thing like that. Anyway. Hey, when I wrote my first book, The Pillars of Health, mm -hmm. on Amazon, some of the one, there was farmers writing. Mm -hmm. Literally, they were dairy farmers and saying they adamantly, you know, vehemently disagreed with what I said about yeah. the dairy industry. Yeah. Of course. So I don't take it personally right. i mean facts are facts you know well that's a good tenant to not take things personally that's yeah. one of the four agreements kenny is enjoying his ice cream while we talk <laughs> about why to make a blended salad oh okay good well i'm glad that uh, you guys made it and i hope you guys uh, are motivated to try it remember everything is about baby steps baby steps baby steps baby steps did you ever see the movie what about bob yeah the Bill Murray. Movie. Mm -hmm. yeah and he talks about baby steps and that's the truth we need to have baby steps and for some people 
eating two, three pounds of vegetables, you know, for half of your day is not doable. Right. But we still want you to get in all those nutrients, so we blend it. And then it makes it so much easier because it really is just a smoothie that's warm minus the fruit. Right, or it could be cold. It can be oh, cold. Oh, it can be cold, sure. It doesn't yeah. have to be warm. Yeah, it it's up cold. to them it's, if they want it hot or what cold. What is that, gazpacho? It's like gazpacho. Yeah. yeah. Basically, It's basically gazpacho. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons we do it. Number two is because a lot of people don't have good digestion. They chew a mm -hmm. little bit fast or not slow enough. And I know for sure I would like to even slow down with eating. But sometimes, you know, when you're, you're rushed and things, it's mm -hmm. not always good. So blending does the chewing for you. So it breaks apart the cell wall and releases nutrients. Now I noticed that you were mentioning or somebody asked a question about heating it. So the minerals heating, are still yep. intact, they're mm -hmm. fine. Um, some of the, the heat soluble vitamin C and B vitamins you may lose if it gets really hot, but the amount that we're getting into the benefits are far better than worrying mm -hmm. about the little nitpicking. So the question we get all the time on Ultimate Weight Loss is can they put fruit in the blended oh. smoothie? And uh, you know, I, I, I don't wanna say no, but I don't think it, it serves the purpose of what we're trying to teach. Yeah, because we're trying to alkalize the palate for mm -hmm. sure to make you as green as possible. And also as you start adding sweet fruits, then it does turn into a smoothie and then your, your palate kind of gets excited right. and your brain said the dopamine starts going and then what do you crave more of? More sweet. Yeah, you want more dopamine. Well, because the, the theory is, is because a lot of us, myself included, when I eat a salad, I often put in an apple, some grapes, sure. or some blueberries. So they're saying, well, I put fruit in my salad why can't I put fruit in my salad smoothie you can I mean but right. remember it's gonna be blended so it's gonna be now it's yeah, juice it's even more yeah. so it's more it, potent well yeah much more potent because yep. it's a difference between eating oats and oat flour right there's a big difference big there. difference huge for difference. our people absolutely yeah. in the end you still get the oat right in the oat flour mm -hmm. but it's been processed to the point that it releases the sugar so quickly right. that much higher you get a glycemic different, yeah, much insulin. different effect yeah so give give the uh, salad smoothie a try i think you might like it i was surprised you, you were surprised I, even charles when he tasted it goes you know this isn't bad and uh, it wasn't yep. you know i liked it yep kenny there liked it and he if he'll eat it <laughs> he hates everything no just kidding that's the old life cereal commercial all right so when kenny's done eating he'll check and see if there's any questions i'll just ask the few that came in so there are, all these questions are from Denise, and I think these oh. are two different Denises, though. So the first one I know is from, I know which Denise it's from. She's local. She asked what we thought about medical medium, Anthony William, and celery juice. He was on the uh, Food Revolution Summit yesterday. Promoting celery juice? Mm -hmm. As oh. a cure for, uh, like, I, I forget exactly what, but uh, that's one of his big things as oh. far as, you know. Oh, so the question is, what do we think well, of yeah, it? Yeah, what do we think of him? What do we think of Selvages? I don't know him, actually, right, but it so sounds interesting. Right. Well, I, I, I don't know him personally. I've attended some of his workshops. Oh. He's very popular. He's a Hay House author oh, as well. Okay. And uh, so I don't want to comment on him other than, because I don't know enough about him to comment. Mm -hmm. He's not a doctor. He's a, like a, he's a, he gets, like. Yeah. He's a medium. Right, exactly. Yeah, absolutely, that's great. And, and about what I like about him is he's promoting the same diet we're promoting. Yeah. Pretty much. Fruits and vegetables, fruits and vegetables. And so anybody that ha is promoting that is going to be on my team that I'm going to embrace and I'm going to like. You know, I don't, every, I don't know every specific recommendation he has. He's very personal. He has a show on Hay House Radio at 2. Oh. And, uh, I mean, I like him. You know, but, but when you say, what do I think of him? Like, you mean, like, to follow all of his recommendations? I know he's into supplements. I don't, I don't want to tell people definitely, you know, be mindful. Read his book. His book sure. is good. His, his wonderful story, Medical Medium. Uh, but, but the thing that's great is, you know, I was listening. I'm listening to the Food Revolution Summit. I've heard all the lectures so far. And... Even the ones that are not plant-based, and even the ones that are for oil, one of the things that everybody agrees on at all the summits is vegetables. Mm -hmm. Some people don't even agree on fruit, right? right? But I've never met one doctor or heard one summit or one lecture where anybody said, I mean, they're telling some doctors are telling us not to eat beans now and rice and oh, things right. like that, but nobody has ever said, don't eat vegetables. Yeah, I mean, so. it's a no-brainer. But uh, the question, I'm not sure what the question is, but just a quick comment about celery juice. I mean, celery is definitely a really high source of natural sodium. Mm -hmm. So when you juice it, you're getting massive amounts of sodium. So you do need to be careful if, you're, if you've been following a standard American diet and then you're, you're drinking you know, quarts of celery juice, it's mm -hmm. a lot of sodium. And if you're in UWL, uh, you're in our program, I'm not sure what the person would be, we don't really want you to drink calories, is, right. if, you know, juices and stuff. One of the things celery juice can do though is, is kind of stimulate the palate. Mm -hmm. So you do have to be careful that that sodium doesn't make you more hungry. Mm -hmm. So something like that. I do use uh, celery juice though for some clients in, in Ultimate Weight Loss who are athletes who are sweating copious mm -hmm. amounts of you know sweat out, so they are losing more sodium. So what I have them do is make celery juice 
and then put that in ice cube trays and then freeze it. And then they can throw that into their soup. They can throw That's it into idea. their blended soup so they get a little bit more sodium in their diet. Right. He's using it for a protocol, which I, even though I read his book, it was a couple of years ago. I don't remember what the protocol was. But celery is great for people that are trying to get rid of salt or decrease the salt. You can buy dehydrated celery, not celery salt, but just dehydrated celery or make it yourself in your dehydrator and then grind it in your coffee grinder or blender and it really is like a great sprinkle. Mm -hmm. Really, really good for that. So she also wanted to know what we thought of Complement, which is oh. a spray that contains B12, D, and I believe DHA, right? Mm -hmm. I have it on my website. All right, so tell so us what you think. So mm -hmm. and click on Shop Resident Recommendations. And what it is, basically, it's obviously the three of the most important nutrients that vegans mm -hmm. or plant-based eaters need to get in their diet. And the reason why the company put it together is because so many people don't like taking pill after pill. Right. And it's so easy just in the morning to yep. do six sprays. So they actually are reformulating the flavor. Some people have said it's been very algae-like, oh. so they're reformulating it. I just uh, actually was in communication with the other day. Nice. Um, but I think it's a, a fine supplement. Some practitioners, I think you'll maybe... Right, so I asked Dr. Goldhammer, and again, when I'm asking him, it's usually what he thinks of, like, for me, should I do it? And he's, he prefers people taking individual things. Yeah. So the reason why I think the company did it was because people just don't like to do that. Or right. they don't like to right. pop pills. Right. So they make it that way. But it's all good ingredients and it's all vegan. So I, I love the product. Absolutely. So the best supplements are the ones that, that are recommended to you by your doctor that you'll actually take. And if yep. it's easier for you to do a spray than to take three different ones, yep. it's just, I guess, apparently maybe not everybody feels they need all three exactly. of those. And that's exactly. why. So it depends. If you're somebody that is already taking all three of those, that would be a great way to get all three of them in very easily and probably even more affordably. So well, we all know we need to be 12. Mm -hmm, and for sure. We know that if you're inside all the time and you're not getting sun, you got to get some somewhere. You got to get vitamin D. So it's either through the sun or supplementation. And then the DHA, uh, you know, it depends how well you convert like flaxseed or green leafy vegetables, purslane, and things like that. And these that. things can be tested, by the way. Oh yeah, you sure. You can, can get can these tested. blood tests done every year. I do yeah. D, B12, and and DHA, or actually my whole fatty acid profile. And by the way, people are like, where do you get purslane? Where do you get purslane? It's it's a weed that grows in the cracks. I'm gonna be going to Mexico. It's gonna oh, be, wow. they're gonna be serving it to us in all the meals, yeah. it's delicious. But you can buy the seeds. I, somebody posted on our oh. board, you can, just like you would buy seeds to grow, to plant. Wow. It, you know, anything, you could get purslane seeds if you wanna yep. try it. It's very good, So actually. for people who don't wanna have seeds in their diet or mm -hmm. nuts, they can have the purslane. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's oh, what you do, right? Absolutely, yeah. but you know, I'm eating so many vegetables that I yeah. just, I haven't been deficient. Yep. All right, so this is a different Denise, and she says, and it's funny, I'm reading off the screen because I, 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 it's not that I, we don't have a printer, but we had new windows installed in this apartment, and I don't know where the printer is. So it says, I've been noticing lately that I get hungry at from around 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. and will consume my first meal at around that time. Lately, I've been working overtime and I get home at around 8 p.m. Oh, excuse me, 8 to 9 p.m. I usually eat when I get home, but I know you have previously said that you shouldn't eat two hours before bed. What do you suggest I do? Should I force myself to eat earlier in the day or should I make my 2, p 2 to 4 p.m. meal the only meal I consume calorie-wise? So first of all, I didn't say you shouldn't eat two hours before bed. I said five. Mm -hmm. That's what I say. People hear what they want to hear. I said absolutely, absolutely minimum three. But when I interview doctors, like especially GI doctors, it's really more like four or five, not two, not even three. And especially if you're somebody trying to lose weight, if you're somebody who does, doesn't have the best sleep, and if you're somebody that has any GI problems like IBS, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, any of that. It's, it's, it's non-negotiable. You need that five hours before you lay down. And so the second part of the question is, um, well, should I, for see, I don't think you should ever force yourself no. to eat, ever, ever. There's no reason to force yourself to eat. If anything you're gonna force, you should force yourself to go to bed hungry one night and not eat at eight to 9 p.m. And guess what's gonna happen? You'll wake up hungrier sooner. So instead mm -hmm. of being hungry at two to four, you might get hungry between eight and 10. So that's what I would do. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah. That intermittent fasting, though, I really think is something people should experiment with, mm -hmm. where they don't start eating till later in the day. Right. I think I've told you before, for me, it just happens that ideally I like it, start eating around noon, right. and I love to stop by five or six. And I agree. And does that matter, like, how much exercise you get? Yeah. Because I find that, like, on, like I did a 95-minute spin class today, and so I was hungrier sooner than on days that yeah, I oh, don't yeah. do anything. Yeah, on days yeah. that I'm 
with clients who are very active, my appetite is totally different. Same here. And sometimes I don't get in till late, so I, I eat. Right. Yeah. If you yeah. were trying to lose weight now, right. you wouldn't have to eat. You could have maybe salads, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't have to have other foods. Right. And, and the thing I suggest is, you know, we're working with, I'm not going to mention her name, we don't have permission, but one of the girls in Mastery that was in the live program okay. that always eats late is that at least if you're going to have to eat late, what you eat makes a difference. Yeah. So instead of eating some huge starch-based meal of potatoes, rice, and beans, maybe have a blended salad mm -hmm. like that. Maybe have a piece of fruit or some steamed vegetables, but don't eat your heaviest, starchiest meal and then lay down yeah. two hours later. I try to tell people to eat the biggest meal of the day Early. between 12 and 2. Absolutely. Where your digestion is kind of, it's what we call the pitta yep. time, yep. where it's the most fiery. Right. They say breakfast like a king, lunch like a prince, dinner like a pauper. Mm -hmm. and, and breakfast that's... doesn't necessarily mean early. Right. Breakfast literally meal. just means break fast. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Any questions, Kenny? Uh, someone was saying, did you bring beans back to the world, to the diet? But well, well the beans have al always been in the diet. I personally have uh, an intolerance to legumes, but beans have always been promoted and re not required, but recommended for people that can have them because they're, they're what all the blue zones have in common, yep. and they're just so healthy and delicious and nutritious and versatile. So there, there are many recipes in my book with beans. Oh, yeah, and I think I've always talked about the resistant starch, mm -hmm. the high lysine content, mm -hmm. which is important. Um, it's a limiting amino acid that some vegans aren't getting. So if you're limiting beans or legumes... I do quinoa now quinoa. every day. Or you can also, and a lot of people don't do it, but if you can't have quinoa and you can't have beans, I would recommend then a supplement glycine, glycine yeah. powder. Pure, Pure Botanicals is the brand that I would get, and they, they sell those at the True yeah. North website. And, and there's different substances. Like when you're... When you're when, lysine is important to form, say, carnitine. And carnitine is mm -hmm. what allows the the mitochondria of your cell, the energy production to burn fatty acids. So if you don't have lysine, methionine, pyridoxine, niacinamide, vitamin C, and iron, then you don't form that carnitine. So you have to make sure you're getting that lysine in your diet. So we do recommend legumes if you can handle them. And what I think Dr. Kerry said, that, uh, Dr. Kerry Saunders said there's like 18,000 Oh my God, there's so, if somebody says yeah. they can't have one kind or don't like one yeah. kind, there's so many others. And also just try literally a half a teaspoon first. And then the next day, a quarter of a teaspoon. Just start slow so your system gets used to it. Same thing with vegetables. You know, so many people, when they come to the Ultimate Weight Loss Program, they're coming from a paleo or a keto oh, where they're yeah. like, you know, they're just not eating large volumes of, of low-calorie dense food or they're maybe coming from the standard American diet where they're really not eating any vegetables. you got to work your way up. You can't yep. just Baby eat, steps. Yeah, baby steps. Yeah. But aren't baby steps for babies? <laughs> well, aren't we all babies a little bit? In a way, in yeah. a way. So, oh, go we, ahead. Maybe we get movie night at the weight loss um, event, um, Ultimate Weight Loss, and watch What About Bob? What About yeah, Bob? Yeah, steps. for people baby that steps. don't want to come to the carnival. So I know most people probably won't be able to join me in Mexico this week, but put Rancho La Puerta on your bucket list. But if you are local, you can join John pierre this Sunday, May 6th. Yep, at the LA Veg mm -hmm. Fest. Yep, I'll be speaking at around 4 o'clock, but I'll have our booth living with Harmony will be there, so I'll be there from 10.30 in the morning till 6.30 at night. Yep, so come say hi. Kenny, will you be at the Veg Fest? Yes, I will. Well, so now is your chance to meet Kenny as yeah, well. Yeah, wow, celebrity. You can come to my booth, Kenny, yep. and sign I'll autographs. At, I'll be at, uh, <laughs> autographs. I'll be at uh, JP's uh, event at 4 o'clock listening to him, yep. awesome. and uh, there's a few other people will be listening to as well. Um, oh, it's going to be a big one. Ingrid Newkirk will be there. Yes. will be there. Yeah. Uh, Captain Paul Watson nice, from, from Sea Shepherd, mm -hmm. and then Gene Bauer from Farm Sanctuary. Wow, he's great. Yeah, so right. some three big speakers there, and then a bunch of other speakers, too. Yeah, Dr. Joel from... Uh, oh, yeah, Dr. Joel Kahn. Wow, Kahn. he's coming big to L.A. Time. just for yeah, that. That's so time. cool. If you are visiting L.A., or if you live here, you know, you can go to the Farm Sanctuary in person or yep. the Gentle Barn. They're both yep. open on Sunday. It's very, very low cost. It's like $10 donation. I don't want yeah. to say exactly, but it's a very low cost donation. And it's a great thing to do, especially if you have kids or out-of-town guests and especially you know it's like meet your meat you know when you yeah. see these creatures it's like well how can you eat them they're you're going to be snuggling them and kissing them yeah. so both places are great to visit you can often find jean pierre they're the gentle barn and farm sanctuary they're both in roughly awesome. the same area which is yep. that way but I'm not and it's sure good to it take your friends and family who aren't vegan or vegetarian mm -hmm. there because they're going to get a different perspective yep. on where their food comes from yeah, and you know where else is a good place to take your friends and family? To the live Ultimate Weight Loss Conference. We're getting close to selling out, guys, so yeah. happy to give you a $100 discount. If you contact me, I'll tell you how to do that. 
but we've got a great lineup and it just keeps getting bigger and better. We've added a third day now on Friday with Dr. Doug Lyle at two wow. o'clock doing a special two hour session wow. where the kind he does at True North, which is not a PowerPoint where he just talks to you about your questions. And then of course, Dr. Olvera and Dr. Barnard rounding out the team of myself, John Pierre, Dr. Goldhammer and Dr. Lyle. So can we just go over eunprocess.com is your website mm -hmm. and your site livingwithharmony.org. Mm -hmm. And people have been asking about that. And if you have any questions for Weight Loss Wednesday, it's a good place to submit them. And next week we won't be here though. Next week I won't be there. I don't I can't broadcast from Mexico because I will be teaching a cooking class at that time. But will you be back in two weeks or are you out of town? Uh, two weeks, yes. I'll be back. May sixteenth. Okay. And hopefully the book will be out so we'll make more recipes from the kitchen. My plan is there's hundred and seventeen recipes in the book and my plan is to make one or two of them every week. So that'll take about two years and who knows if I'll still be doing this in two years. Oh we all hope so. Yeah. Weight Loss Wednesday, episode 576. Wow, that'd be a big one. Yeah. Any questions, Kenny? You know, I could talk right. about um, ACV if someone wants to ask Apple about that. Vinegar. Another Good. person asked if you bring your own popcorn to movies. So we have some newbies online sure. here. Sure. Well, so these are good questions. We'll start with the ACV. I met Patricia Bragg. She's yeah, lovely. Too. And she has a whole book about apple cider vinegar. And it's a delicious vinegar. And for... Uh, it's, I mean, it's great in things. I use it in my red lentil chili. I use it in recipes. It's even good by itself. Mm -hmm. And as far as that purported health benefits, that's not my area of expertise. So I'll uh, let you take it. Well, I mean, that's just, it's always controversial what mm -hmm. they say about apple cider vinegar. So, I mean, if you, if you use it and you feel you get a benefit from it, then keep using it. If you feel it helps your digestion, that's fine. Um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think it's necessarily dangerous. Right. So. Someone else was saying taking... Um, celery juice to help make their more alkaline their stomach more alkaline yeah well any t as long different. as you're following our program you're gonna be alkaline because yeah, basically be every vegetable is alkaline within reason but you know like black black radishes and cucumbers are are super high alkaline cucumbers anything right. dark green leafy is gonna be super alkaline right. also where the acidity starts in the bad stuff is gonna be animal products and processed foods right. so everything we're avoiding so the question about taking popcorn to the movies in LA the theaters all have recliners so First of all, I'm not going to eat in the dark because that's not mindful because, it, I mean, I don't eat because the, there's a, a lot of people eat because it's a movie and we're just conditioned yeah. movie popcorn. Sure. And so I did used to eat popcorn. As a matter of fact, he has a little story about the San Francisco airport and the popcorn. It's a Hansel and Gretel story. But I used to eat a lot of air pop lot. popcorn on airplanes because I was nervous and I didn't know how to deal with my anxiety. I mean, it was like AJ would was literally like, take like it. a Santa Claus <laughs> bag of popcorn. It was unbelievable. And uh, that's how he found me at the airport because my plane, we were, our plane was about to leave because it was a, uh, it was a like a when you have more than one stop. Yeah, layover. Exactly. Right. And, and you we just got follow, lost. Right. You followed the trail of popcorn. I literally followed yeah. all the trail popcorn. And he popcorn. found me. So I don't eat popcorn anymore for a couple of reasons. One, because I broke a crown and that was $1,500, you know, on that little piece. But more important, I found out that it's not really the weight loss healthy snack that people think it is. You know, when Dr. Goldhammer was asked what he thought about Air pop popcorn, he said it's great if you want to gain weight. What people don't realize that even though it may be low calorie if you have this much, most people aren't having this much, it's 1,800 calories a pound. Corn is only 500 calories per pound, so it's more than triple. It's almost four times the caloric density as corn, plus all the water is removed. And anytime you eat food without water, you're going to overeat it because water helps you feel full on fewer calories. So I don't eat in the movie theater because that I'm there to watch a movie. What I like about being in the Screen Actors Guild is when I go to that theater, it's not allowed. You're allowed to have water, but eating is not allowed because you're there to support the people that made the movie and to be engaged in the movie, not to be eating. Right. And I wish I wish all theaters, I mean, the truth is, is they make more money on the concession yeah. than they do on the movies. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's just the smell, I think, of popcorn is so disgusting. And then plus they have hot dogs and nachos yeah. and ice cream. And you know, when I was with Gustavo in Dallas seeing a movie, they actually, like, while the movie's going on, you could just order a pizza, and then they come and deliver it. And it's like, it breaks the whole reality for me yeah. of the movie. So I don't, if I was going to eat in a movie, I'd probably eat sugar snap peas if I felt like I had to eat. But why do you have to eat in the movies? Did you not eat dinner? I mean, Yeah, it's just know. not mindful right. to be eating in movies. In movie, I mean, it's, eating in the dark is not the greatest idea yeah. if you're a sighted person. They actually have, you know, I used to volunteer at the Braille yeah. Institute, and they have this place called Dining in the Dark where people with sight actually eat in the dark to try to experience what it's like for blind people. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that was kind of cool, like the idea. But um, if you have your sight, then eat 
with the light on and that you can see your food and don't eat while watching TV, reading the paper, checking your email because you tend to overeat when you're not eating mindfully. I'm not saying you have to pick up your fork and chew 30 times and put it down, but if you eat with distraction, you're going to overeat. And plus, popcorn is not a food people eat because they're hungry. It's a hand to mouth food. And if people have to eat popcorn, there's only one way I recommend it. And that's with chopsticks. Yep slows you down. Yep. Hand but, to mouth foods yeah. trigger binging in people that yeah. are, are vulnerable to that. Well, and the, the truth is how many people eat popcorn plain? Most people start getting the, yeah. you know, the urge to start putting something on there. I mean, to me, air pop popcorn tastes like those styrofoam peanuts oh, right. or what I think they would taste like. People are not eating air pop popcorn because they like it. They're eating it yeah. because they want to medicate and yeah. put something in their mouth and chew. Well, you've seen those studies with stale popcorn in movie theaters. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. They just kept eating it and eating it, especially if it was free. Yeah. Yeah. That's from a book called Mindful, Mindless Eating by Brian Wansick, who I got to interview. A really fascinating book. So we have a newbie. I have two questions here. Sure. One's a newbie that's asking a question. She understands that you are on an SOS mm -hmm. plan. For actually, other, SOS, SOS free. free. There's free. a difference. Yeah, exactly. It's actually SOFAS free. S-O-F-A-S. Yes. Sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, salt. And her question is, for others, can you recommend <laughs> recommended grams of sugar and salt that they could ingest? The Jesus. amount? I yeah. Mean, well, grams of salt. Well, yeah. So you said. Well, okay. Gosh, we, so, so the recommendation is no more. I mean, what I'm saying, what the government says, no more than two thousand milligrams yeah, of sodium. And that's even high. I don't know what it is in grams, but that's the most they recommend. Mm -hmm. But realize, most Americans are getting their salt from things like cheese, from bread, bread where it's hidden. Yeah. Well, so, and all meat. Right, and that's e that's even before adding the salt shaker. So that and there's 2,300 milligrams of sodium in one teaspoon of salt. Mm -hmm. So that's less than a teaspoon of salt is recommended. Truthfully, if you eat the diet we recommend and you eat enough calories, you're going to get a minimum of 500 milligrams of sodium, probably. Yeah. More. Now, it, if you did exercise or sweat a lot, yeah. then again, celery and chard and things yeah. like that would boost it up. So um, with sugar. They say that we don't have any need for any discretionary calories from sugar. Right. Fruit. Just yeah, eat fruit. Exactly. They say that Americans eat over 150 pounds of sugar per person per year, which is 900 calories a day. They say for they, meaning the government, the American Heart Association, American Cancer Society, all that kind of stuff, they say that no more than 5% of our calories. So what that would look like for most women is five teaspoons, mm -hmm. which if as a former pastry chef, I can tell oh, you, man. you're not going to get nothing. You're not even going to, you're not going to get a whole soda. A can of soda pops like nine. 16 teaspoons. Oh, for the big one, yeah. So you're not going to be able to drink a soda. You're not going to be able to drink alcohol. You're not going to be able to drink a whole piece of dessert. No. Five teaspoons of sugar is nothing. I mean, five teasp of sugar might be enough to, if you sprinkle it on your own. But why would you want sugar? You could well, have fruit. Well, because what, do, do you know, Kenny, what she wants to put it Because either on? they're sugar addicts it's or they're addicted to oh. processed food. And they can't, you know, yeah. it's in everything from baby formula to geriatric yeah. formula. So many people don't realize that they put sugar in cigarettes. We have people in UWL that we've been begging to quit smoking before mm -hmm. they even do the program. Because, I mean, they get you every way they can, the sugar industry. I don't think there's any place in UWL where you could put sugar, though, is there? What would we put it on? Um, Kale. Well, I'm, I'm, I, I don't I'm know. just saying, if you thought there was a place to put it, then use fruit instead. Yeah, you know, I was I was reading Kristen Bummer's excellent blog today, Beans Not Bambi. I really recommend. You know, we talk about laser being focused in UWL, and there are a few blogs though that I would say are in, in alignment with us in that. In that you know, because some of them just these pictures of hyper palatable food, oh, right. and and it's interesting how the bloggers do it now. It's not just one picture; it's like ten pictures of every step of the mm -hmm. recipe that just you, you're drooling by the end. But beans, not Bambi, Bambi and Nutmeg Notebook are two that I really uh, recommend. And of course, subscribing to Heather Goodwin's page. Uh, it's called uh, the Butterfly Effect, plant-based weight oh. loss. That's a YouTube page. But she talked about what she ate in a day, and I'm like, this is like what I eat in a day. And so what we tend to do, at least what I've noticed the very successful people in UWL have tended to do, is we favor the vegetables and starch over the fruit. And that doesn't mean that we don't eat fruit. And again, yeah. we are not bashing fruit. No. There are people like Robbie Barbero who can eat only fruit and thrive as a type 1 diabetic. But he's never been overweight, and he's never been a sugar addict. Fruit... Not only in some people can raise your triglycerides, but it perpetuates the desire for more That's sweet. That's the main thing that we really right. in this program. And again, if it's a choice of having a you know a second apple or you know a hot fudge sundae, we always want you to go to fruit. Yeah. But the thing is, is it. it Anytime you're not eating vegetables, that's the thing. And people are not eating enough vegetables to fight the cravings and, and, and to really overcome the sugar addiction. So, you know, when we started out, people were you know, eating like five bananas at a mm -hmm. meal. And they weren't eating their vegetables. They weren't eating their starch. Starch, you know, when you stop eating all sugar, 
I mean, romaine lettuce is sweet. Mm -hmm. Zucchini is sweet. You know, you really can change and reset your, your, your taste buds. And when you just keep hitting it with fruit all day from the minute you wake up with the berries in your oats and the berries in your salad and fruit for dessert and banana ice cream, you don't ever really get to the point where you're just satisfied with veggies right. and starch. And this is, by the way, a starch-based program. We want 75% of your calories to come from whole starches like winter squashes and sweet potatoes and potatoes and legumes and, and grains, gluten-free though, it's a gluten-free program. So uh, again, you know, fruit's not bad, two pieces well, a day. Well, fruit's great, I mean, there's no, no fruit's doubt great. about it. But there are like it's the, the volume. Right, the, and most people, and like you say, fruit's been hybridized. You know, I interviewed, well, yeah. the, I interviewed the food addiction expert who I'll be interviewing in two years, two years, in two weeks, Dr. Vera Tarman, oh. and she said, you know, that's the, there's nothing wrong with eating a piece of fruit at every meal, like mm -hmm. which if you're eating two meals a day is two pieces, or three meals a day, three. But there are people that are just, you know, eating pounds and well, pounds of grapes. Well, and they go grapes. into dried fruit, oh, and yeah, then they well, start doing that banana thing that you do. What's it called? You... Well, that's what I made, Kenny, yeah. And yeah. then you're taking all these bananas, right. and you're putting it in, it's condensing Yeah, it. exactly. And then after you're done eating it, your palate is so excited that you don't want a salad. Nope. So that's the problem. If you have food addictions, yeah. it's an issue. If you don't have food addictions, it's fine. You Great know, you, for kids, by the way. Oh, yeah. Great for people maybe coming off sugar. I mean, I know I did that yeah. in the interim, but oh, I know yeah. now that I, it's not that I watch my fruit, but I'm so full from my vegetables and starches, I usually don't have room for yeah. too much fruit except for the, you know, the berries that I put every day in my salad. And, yeah. and again, what fruit are you eating? See, people want always the sweetest, most yeah. sugary fruits. They want the tropical fruits. They want the yeah. mango. They want the banana. Yeah. They don't want the green apple or the berries. The, the grapefruit and yeah. the low glycemic things like That's grapefruit and berries. Exactly. Yeah. And but you know it's funny. I, and I never liked grapefruit my whole life, and now I love it. It's, mm. and, and arugula. It's you know taste can change. It's funny because. I never thought I'd be saying this about any greens that I love them, but especially arugula because it's kind of like bitter and peppery. It's peppery, yeah. And now it's like a day without arugula. It's like, mm -hmm. oh my god, I love it. It's my favorite. So taste. And, and you change. don't do pepper. I'm allergic to black pepper. I can do red pepper. Kenny has such a good memory. See? Yeah. So we have a really good question. I think uh, you guys can answer it. Is there another question I could ask about? Uh, veggie burgers that someone's being asked to go to a restaurant and yeah. what do you think about the impossible burger well which is like again you know burger it, it, brand. We, it's just, we don't know where where you're coming from in your journey to optimal health if you're yeah. overweight if you have their husband wants to disease. take her out for mother's day and the whole family and they want to go to this restaurant that has this impossible burger so yeah. that's what they think is the family event sure yeah. um what is I, she, hear, I hear scared. it's expensive i hear it bleeds like me well it's got beets but yeah. but everybody who's tried it say said it's the most incredible tasting wow. thing they've ever had a lot of vegans who try it spit it out because they think it tastes so real. Wow. So for people who are trying to transition off animal products, it's a 10, mm -hmm. beautiful. Get it all as much as you can in. But if you're trying to follow ultimate weight loss, obviously that's not yeah. something we're recommending. Yeah. yeah. They actually have it at a new food truck that meets in Northridge. It's, oh. They call it the vegan junk food. Have you yeah. tried it? I didn't have it. I, I didn't want to eat You that. know, I stopped eating meat 41 years ago because I didn't like it. So I don't want something that's going to taste like it. That's yeah. me. And plus, you know, when you eat rest at restaurants, you're going to get more sugar, fat, and salt than you ever would at home. Yeah. And again, if you're somebody that is a hardcore food addict, the, you know, one restaurant meal can just set you off to a downward spiral. Well, you're spiral. right. And also, when you're eating a burger, a veggie burger, what are you eating it with? I mean, there's always... A bun. The, well, you get in the bun. Fries. fries and then you get fries. some sort of some sort of ketchup, which is salt yeah. and sugar, mm -hmm. and then mustard or barbecue sauce. Yeah. So your sodium level goes through the roof. Your sugar starts getting spiked. But is it is it okay? Well, yeah, compared to an animal product, yeah. it's it's a 10. If you absolutely have to eat in a restaurant, go to follow your... I mean, I don't do you know if this person lives in L.A.? I have no idea. Because Follow Your Heart has an SOS-free menu now. And yeah. in, in the family can eat from the vegan comfort food menu, and you can have the sweet potato tacos or the the thing that I like, the, 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 the green veggie pasta, which is actually blanched zucchini. Yeah. So that's what I would recommend. You know, when you, it, you know, for me, somebody that was overweight or obese for over 50 years, I think restaurants are the greatest punishment. And I have to go there only when kicking and screaming. Yeah. And plus, having worked in one, I could tell you guys stories about what really happens in the kitchen, and none of you would ever eat in a restaurant again, but I won't do that. Well, yeah, remember, it's just baby steps again. So you just do what you can do, but anything to stay away from animal products and as much processed food. Animal products is number one to stay away from, and then, of course, processed foods. You know, if I was a mother and I, my family wanted to do something nice for me for Mother's Day, assuming that they weren't on board, I would say what Mommy really wants is for everybody to sit down and watch Forks Over Knives, and, st and this is what I want is for you guys to support me. You know, one of the things that Dr. Dana Simpler said today, I interviewed her at 
on Healthy Living Live. The interview is right on the same page you're watching this on, and it will be on YouTube very soon. Is she said that you need to sit your family down and, and explain this to them, whether it's showing them forks over knives or maybe for people in ultimate weight loss, showing them one of our videos and says, look, you don't have to do this. You just have to understand why I'm doing it and support me and yeah. not sabotage me right. and sure. not ridicule me. Well, that's, yeah. that's the kind thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> As we're getting to the end, and we have like one great question. Right. We, can, we have people from all over the world, from Puerto Rico and England. Oh, I've been to Puerto stuff. Rico. It's so wonderful. So the question someone asked, Diane asked, Diane Morris Rowland says, I know her. She is has, there she has some place I can find all about all the veg events? And again, we can talk yeah, about Eric is. and... Uh, Diane, there is, and I, the name escapes me, but there is a website, a comprehensive website that has it. Happy Cow will it. also have some of that. Sure, I, I, will, I know what she's talking about, but there is a Master Vegan calendar, and I will search for it and post it on Ultimate Weight Loss for sure. But there is one, absolutely. But uh, the best one is the Live Ultimate Weight Loss Conference on Labor Day, so come to that come one. Come to Las Vegas. Or come to the, my second favorite one, which is the True North Holiday Extravaganza it's December. It's the easiest place to get to anywhere in the world because Vegas. everyone goes to That's Vegas. That's why we had it there because yeah. we. I talked to two friends of mine who've been travel agents for like 30 years and because a lot of people said, oh, we want it in Portland, we want it in Chicago, we want it to move around. Well, you don't have a successful conference if you keep moving it around because it takes so long to train the hotel mm -hmm. staff and the chefs. And they said, hands down, it, the cheapest airfares, the most air, the most flights, and the cheapest accommodations was Vegas. And the hotel did a great job. Yeah. And we're going to be going there in June to the he Health Healing Happiness Conference. Oh, yeah. I'll be there if you'd like to. I'm not as a presenter, just as a participant. And then we're going to work with the hotel some more to get that. There was a few recipes that we want to step up their game, but for the most part, they did a terrific job with the food. Fantastic. We need a wrap. All right. So thank you so much. And if you don't have either or both of these terrific books available on Amazon, written by John Pierre, Strong, Savvy, Safe, kind of like women's empowerment, I would mm -hmm. say, self-esteem. And of course, one of my favorites, The Pillars of Health. So thank you guys so much for watching episode 74 of Weight Loss Wednesday. Thank you, Kenny, for helping. I'm Chef AJ, and along with my partner, John Pierre, we both believe you can have the health and the body you so richly deserve. Thanks, everyone. That's a wrap.